The Lancaster was a British bomber that was designed by Roy Chadwick in 1942 for the Second World War. It was called a near-perfect flying machine, and on this week's episode of Never Stop Learning, we will be looking back at the role that the Lancaster played in helping to win the war through these three amazing true stories. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to see all new content. Nighttime Raider The Lancaster was the main aircraft used for nighttime bombing campaigns over occupied Europe. On June 13, 1944, while on a raid in northern France, the crew of KB-726 was hit from below by what the Germans called a Schrang Musak, or pipe organ. This was an aircraft fit with four 20mm cannons aiming straight up into the sky. This type of aircraft was being used by the Nazis to decimate the Lancaster fleet. They could use the Lancaster's radar to pinpoint their location, then fly up and shoot them right out of the sky. So the aircraft was hit in the wings and in the fuselage, knocking out the hydraulics. The pilot immediately called for the crew to bail out. So everyone grabbed their parachutes, but Andrew Minarski realized that his good friend, Pat Brophy, was trapped in the rear gunner seat. Everyone else jumped out of the plane, but Andy couldn't bring himself to leave his friend behind. By now, the front of the aircraft was engulfed in flames, so as quickly as he could, Andy grabbed a crowbar and started to pry the seat loose to save his friend. As the plane fell from the sky, the flames quickly crept towards them. Andy realized that he wouldn't be able to save his friend in time. Pat looked at him and told him he had to go before he burnt up. Andy agreed, and as he got to the door, he saluted his squad mate, then bailed out. But what he didn't realize is that he was covered in fuel and burning embers. Pat watched for his friend to make sure he was safe, but once free of the plane, the embers ignited Andy's uniform, and he burst into flames. By now, Pat realized that he only had a few more moments to live, so he tried to remember some prayers, but he couldn't. He decided to do a Hail Mary as the ground got closer. As the fireball that used to be the Lancaster reached the ground, it illuminated the surrounding forest, and just as the plane made impact, the payload of bombs ignited, sending the tail of the aircraft sailing back through the air. And the next thing Pat knew, he was lying in a ditch, still in one piece, still alive. He took a moment to gather himself, and he removed his helmet. As he did this, a large chunk of hair remained inside. He looked around and saw a small village to the east. As he began to walk towards it, he was quickly stopped by a member of the French resistance who said, Come with me if you want to live. Pat followed the resistance fighter, who managed to get him back to Portugal and on a ship returning to England. As they traveled, the resistance fighter said to Pat, Have you always been bald? To which Pat replied, Only since this morning. It seemed that the fear and shock of falling and knowing that he was most certainly going to die made every hair on his head fall off. Eventually, when Pat arrived back in England, he stopped off at a pub near his base for a well-deserved pint. And as he entered the bar, he saw his pilot. They made eye contact, and the pilot's face went white as a sheet. He looked at Pat, who by all accounts must be dead, and said, Hey, I'm not in the mood to deal with ghosts right now. Pat, now with beer in hand, sat down to tell him his unbelievable story and the heroic attempt Andy made to save his life. The Lancaster in Hamilton, Ontario is dedicated to Andy and the sacrifice he made. Operation Chastise This operation required a special crew trained under engineer Barnes Wallace who developed the bomb. This bomb, nicknamed the Dam Buster, was attached underneath the Lancaster with a special harness and hooked to an electric motor. As they approached the top of the dam, they would activate the motor, causing the bomb to spin at high speeds. They would drop the bomb and it would skip over the top of the reservoir and not get caught in the enemy torpedo nets. It would hit the dam wall and then sink. 
It had an onboard pressure sensor that, once it hit a certain depth, would activate the detonator and explode, destroying the dam. To make this bomb work, it would have to be dropped from exactly 60 feet in the air. So there were two spotlights installed on the aircraft, one in the nose and one in the fuselage. If the plane was exactly 60 feet in the air, these two lights would illuminate one spot on top of the water. This is how they were able to gauge their height so accurately. While all of this was happening, the dam was littered with anti-aircraft turrets. So multiple Lancasters were sent out to each dam, hoping that at least one would be successful. This was a very effective way to cripple the Nazis by knocking out their power generators. And at the same time, once the dams were destroyed, it flooded the industrial complex, crippling the war effort. The Blockbuster. The Blockbuster was a 12,000 pound bomb that could be carried by the Lancaster. It was so big that they had to remove the bomb bay doors so it could be fastened correctly. It was called the Blockbuster because of its ability to destroy entire city blocks in one explosion. The Blockbuster was used to cripple the U-boat pens. A U-boat pen was the structure created by the Nazis to do maintenance on all of their submarines. These pens were covered with 21 feet of reinforced concrete. When the Blockbuster was dropped, the explosion itself couldn't penetrate the concrete. But the shockwave created by the explosion was so powerful that it decimated the submarines stationed inside. The crews inside the submarines also suffered many casualties from being thrown around inside the ships. Post reconnaissance of the site showed very little damage externally to the base. But after the war, reports were revealed showing that these bombing runs were extremely effective at crippling the German U-boats. There were also reports of U-boats getting repaired and being sent back out to run missions to destroy Allied ships. But when the commanders ordered the crews to fire, it was discovered that the torpedo tubes had been warped by the shockwave, rendering the ship useless. So that's three amazing stories of how the Avro Lancaster helped to defeat Nazi Germany. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe and be sure to check out all of our other episodes like this one, Torso in the Woods. Thanks for watching.